And today, what I want to speak to you about is the Good Shepherd. Now, straight away, as soon as I say that, you know exactly who we are talking about. We are talking about Jesus Christ, the Shepherd of the sheep. And who are the sheep? You and I. So please listen in. I want to go straight to the Gospel of John, chapter 10. And I'm going to be reading from verse 11 through to verse 14. And Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. You know, I love it when the Lord says, I am. Right from Genesis. You remember Moses said, he was a shepherd as well. He said to the Lord, who should I tell Pharaoh that has sent me? Who has sent me? He said, tell him, I am who I am has sent you. And that word is sort of like, not only universal, it's just right around creation. I am. I am the beginning and I am the end. I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. And I just thank God for that because without I am, we have got nothing. So Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, now that's important. What is a hireling? A hireling is an employee, and a, a hireling carries his watch on his wrist. <laughs> and when it's five o'clock or whatever the time is, I want to tell you that that hireling, he knocks off. Doesn't matter whether the sheep are lost or not. Now, I'm not being ugly, but I'm talking about the difference between a man who works for a wage and a man who works for his inheritance. And for his sheep. A good farmer never wears a watch. Why? Because I tell you what, you never knock off. You see, farming is not a job. Farming is a lifestyle. And if the sheep are giving birth to lambs in the middle of the night, take a guess what? Doesn't matter. And I know sometimes mothers, you get so frustrated. Your young husband is supposed to go to the prize giving. And the children are all waiting. And there's a sheep that is caught. And you have to... You have to heal it, you have to set it free, and you have to get it back to the flock. And that is why a farmer's day is never done. And a shepherd never, ever goes to sleep on the job. And another thing is, a shepherd is working because he loves his sheep. He doesn't do it because he has to. He does it because he wants to. But a hireling, he is not the shepherd. This is what Jesus says. One who does not own the sheep. You see, the sheep are not his. As long as he gets his salary at the end of the month, he's quite happy. One who does not own his sheep, he sees the wolf coming, okay, and he leaves the sheep and he flees. He's interested in looking after himself. He's not interested in looking after the sheep. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling, it's amazing how the Lord ho hops onto this one, eh? You know, folks, there are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. You need to really test the spirit. And I'm talking about me included. Make sure that that pastor, that minister, that man that's looking after the flock has really got your best interest at heart. Because if he hasn't, when the going is tough, he won't be there. You really need to ask God to show you the shepherd that you need to stand with. He goes on to say, the hyaline flees because he's a hyaline and does not care about the sheep. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by them, by my own. Jesus is the good shepherd. He's not a hyaline. He didn't come down from heaven to earth to look after you and me because he wanted money. He doesn't need money. He's God. He did it because he loves us and because he is our creator. And I want to say to you today that there, you could never ask for a better shepherd. And the problem with a lot of us is we are not looking to the shepherd, are we? No, we are making a plan ourselves. Or we are looking to some other person. Now, people will always let you down. I'll, I'll let you down. Not intentionally. You can't even look to your wife or your husband. You have to look to God. In fact, ladies, I want to speak to you particularly. It's actually very unfair. 
of you to put so much responsibility on your husband when he becomes everything to you. He is a creation just like you. He makes mistakes. He comes short sometimes. But you need to love him through it. Your ultimate trust is in one only, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. Please remember that. Same with you children. You know, my mom and my dad are everything to me. That's fine. But remember, ultimately, it's the good shepherd. It's Jesus. I spoke to a lady that we know very well. She's one of our team. And she told me one day, she opened her heart and she said, my dad was my hero. My dad was the idol in my life. That's what she said. As far as I was concerned, the sun didn't come up without my dad's permission. And then what happened? And my dad loved the Lord. He fell. He fell into adultery and he went off with another woman. She said, my life crashed in front of me. And I'm talking to a lot of women, particularly women at the moment, who are dealing with that issue. I know another young lady, she's never had children. It's not that she can't have children. She just doesn't want children because she doesn't want the responsibility. Why? Because her dad did the same thing. He left her mother and he went off with another woman and her life has been shattered. Yes, God has healed her, but there are scars there. I want to say to you today, do not put your trust in people. Do not put your trust in things. I know men who have built empires. They've worked 18 hours a day all their lives only to see it crumble. Remember the famous Wall Street crash when the whole economy just fell? Men were jumping out of windows in skyscrapers and committing suicide. Why? Because their trust was not in the Good Shepherd. Their trust was in their money, in their finances. I know sportsmen. When they come to the end of their career, I know of one particular, a wonderful, wonderful man. But he gets up in the morning, he's got nothing more to do. He's won the World Cup, he's done this, he's done that, and he's got nothing else to do. That was his life. It was more than his life. It was his God. And what did he do? He committed suicide. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd. Everything else is secondary. Everything. Your family, your vision, everything comes second to the Good Shepherd. He is the one that will see you to the end of the race. Now, sheep need lots of looking after. <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> I think I'm a black sheep, actually. Sheep look, need lots of looking. Now, I'm a farmer. I understand that. Here, I've got a horse here. Here's Snowy, my horse. He doesn't need lots of looking after. As you can see, he's well, well looked after. Uh, like me, he's not carrying, he's not, you can't see his ribs, okay, he's well fed, but he looks after himself pretty much. Cattle are tough, cattle. I'm a cattleman, by the way. Cattle are tough, they're resilient. They fight us. But sheep don't fight. You know, there's an old joke, and I, I know all the shepherds will laugh at this. You see a crowd of sheep standing together in a field, and they do stand together in the field, and the one guy said, I think they, they try to work out a new way to die. <laughs> because it's not an easy thing looking after sheep. Sheep are subject to internal parasites, blowfly in their, in their uh, wool. They uh, get foot rot and all other manner of, of sickness. They are very delicate. I love sheep, by the way. We used to have 500 Ile-de-France stud ewes on this farm. And I understand how important it is to look after sheep because they are extremely vulnerable. They need more looking after than any other animal on the farm. I want to tell you a little story. My, my uncle, my dad's brother, my dad came from a family of seven, six boys and one girl. My aunt was the youngest. My dad came out to Africa as a blacksmith and he started to make his living here. He had a brother, Uncle Ronnie, who was very sickly. He suffered from asthma. He was a chronic asthmatic. He spent a lot of his young days in hospital. And he didn't get much education either. And he became a shepherd. Now, I want to tell you something about this man. He was a Scotsman, obviously. He was a man of a very gentle spirit. He was a quietly spoken man. He was a definite man. In fact, he was one of my heroes. And Uncle Ronnie was a shepherd. 
And when I went to agricultural college in the north of Scotland, on a weekend I would go and stay with my uncle and he would take me out in his little pickup with all his dogs in the back. He had five or six uh, Scottish border collies, those black and white dogs, sheep dogs. And he would run the sheep with his dogs, just him and the dogs and a shepherd's crook. The most amazing dogs I've ever seen. Those dogs would only listen to him. They would only follow him. I, I used to marvel at it. You know, he'd be talking to me and their eyes would be on him all the time. He would stand up and they would stand up. The one time he took me into a field. It was a massive field and the sheep was scattered all over the place. We like sheep have gone astray, everyone to his own way, right? And Uncle Ronnie would stand there and as he was talking to me, he'd put his arm out like that and the sheep dogs would take off. No talking, like that. And I tell you what, within about two or three minutes, the sheep were in amongst our legs. <laughs> you couldn't see the sheep dogs. They were just lying, waiting for the next command. He was an incredible shepherd and his sheep were in magnificent condition. I want to say to you as well, you know, when you drive onto somebody's farm, one of the first things, well, I'm a farmer, but I don't think you have to be a farmer to see this. The first thing you normally look at as you drive onto the farm is the condition of the fences. If the wires are pulled nice and tightly and they're in a straight line and the road is nice and even, and then you see the sheep and they are nice and well looked after and they are peaceful. They're not running all over the place. You know that you're on a good farm. You know that you're going to meet a good shepherd. But when you come onto a farm and the sheep are standing in the district road, they're going to be run over sure, sure as anything by some truck. The fences are broken down. The roads are in a mess. Look out. I'm telling you, you'll find that shepherd's probably sitting in his house drinking coffee when he should be working. Now, the good shepherd is not like that. Jesus is not like that. One thing about our God, our God... He has not got a lazy bone in his body. In fact, the Bible says lazy men don't deserve to eat. That's quite a serious accusation. The Lord worked for six days. He created everything that you can see around you. Isn't it a beautiful day on the farm? We're going to get some gentle rain maybe later on, or maybe the sun's going to come out. He made it in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. I want to say to you something now. The Lord is not lazy. Everything is in order. The Lord has got a gentle character, but he's very firm with his sheep. Very firm. You know why? Because sheep need leaders. The Lord says, we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone to his own way. He doesn't say we like cattle have gone astray or we are like horses that have gone astray. No, we like sheep have gone astray. Sheep need a leader. If you go to the Middle East, and I've been there many, many times. I go to Israel. I try and go to Israel as much as I can. And if you go to the Middle East and you see those Bedouin shepherds, they do not chase their sheep with sheepdogs like we do in the West. They lead their sheep from the front. The sheep actually follow the shepherd. It amazes me. I get enthralled when I see that, probably because I'm a farmer. You know that they'll go down to a watering hole at midday and there'll be a whole lot of other shepherds. They haven't got lots of sheep, but maybe 20, 30, 40, maybe 100 each. And all the sheep will get mixed up. Now for me, <laughs> that would be a disaster. How are we going to separate these sheep? And then the shepherds go and they sit underneath a tree and they talk about the day's news. That's their newspaper and they talk about their families. And after an hour or so, they say goodbye to each other. They stand up and they just whistle or maybe they call. And the sheep can hear the voice of the shepherd. And as that shepherd walks off, his sheep disentangle themselves from the other sheep and they follow after the shepherd because he's the one who's going to show them the way and look after them. How many of us are listening to the voice of the shepherd? The Lord goes on, he says, my sheep know me and they hear my voice. How many of you and I are listening to the voice of the shepherd? Or are we maybe listening to what the news says on the radio or the television or on your smartphone and you're making decisions 
according to what the media are reporting. I want to tell you, be careful. Because you cannot believe everything that you hear on the newscasts. I know. I have been subject to some of that. What they tell you is what makes news. They exaggerate. They leave out parts of the story and they give you a false impression. And that's what causes panic. I'm talking particularly now to young couples. You know, we better leave because this place is coming apart. Who said it's coming apart? Did Jesus say it's coming apart? No. Well, then you better keep going. Right? The good shepherd, he's the one who speaks. And when he speaks, then you move. If the good shepherd tells you it's time for you to move on to a new destination, you move the same day. You don't even delay. You sit in there and you're saying, but the shepherd hasn't told me anything. Well, that's also an answer. When the shepherd tells you nothing, you stay exactly where you are and you carry on doing the work that you're doing. That's what brings security and peace. This world at the moment is suffering. It's not suffering so much from the COVID-19. It's suffering from a spirit of fear, a spirit of confusion. It's suffering from a spirit of anxiety and stress. Why? Because we, I'm talking, including myself, we are not listening to the voice of the Good Shepherd. Jesus said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. He says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. So why are we so fearful? I would like to suggest to you, we are fearful because we are not listening to the voice of the Good Shepherd. We need direction. Because if we don't have it, we make our own plans. And then we walk straight into the, the den of the wolf and he devours us. You know, when I was at agricultural college, there was a man there. I've never forgotten his name. <laughs> As you get older, your long-term memory seems to do better and your short-term memory doesn't do so well. Have you noticed that? What did I have for supper last night? I can't remember. <laughs> but this man in 1966, a lot of you weren't even born then. He was at agricultural college, college with us. His name was Macmillan. He was a tall man. I'd put him probably close to seven foot tall. He had jet black hair and he had very angular features. He, he also was a very quietly spoken man. He spent a lot of time on his own. When we had to do um, outdoor work, he would always be half a mile ahead of us. Those big legs, he would just walk. I'm sure Abraham Lincoln would probably looked a bit like that. And the one day he came to the lecturer and he said, Sir, I have to go home. And the lecturer said, I look, you're right in the middle of your course. He said, I've had a phone call from home and they need me at home immediately. Obviously, he got compassionate leave and he left. You see, he came from the west coast of Scotland where those big mountains are, those craggy hilltops. Okay? And he was a shepherd. His father, who was obviously an old man, he had sheep. And now in the summer, the sheep would be up in the mountains grazing. Those black-faced sheep, you've seen them, long-haired sheep. And then when winter came, they had to come down to the lowlands. And of course, that's where they would lamb down and have their babies. And no one could bring them down because they didn't know the way. Does that make you remember something in Scripture? What did Thomas say to Jesus? Lord, we don't know the way. What did Jesus say? I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. John chapter 14, verse 6. And so Macmillan went home and he would have taken his sheep all the way down, would have been a special way all the way back down safely, down to ground level where they would have paddocks and they'd be able to lamb down and have their babies with no problems. I want to say to you today, and I'm talking to someone particularly, you have lost your way because you are not listening to the voice of the shepherd. If we go to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 53 and verse 6, you will see, we like sheep have gone astray, each one to his own way. The Lord refers to us as sheep, not as goats, not as horses, not as cattle, as sheep. Why? 
because sheep need a shepherd. Now, if Macmillan had not gone back, those sheep would have never come down. And you know, I want to say something that's very serious on my heart at the moment. What sheep do? They follow the sheep in front of them. So if you get a sheep that's going the wrong way, all the flock will follow that sheep to the extent that if that sheep falls off the edge of the cliff, the rest will follow. That's how serious it is. And what's concerning me in this day and age in which we are living, there are so many false prophets. There are men that are denying the sovereignty of Christ. I heard a sad story the other day, a man who I know very well. He has left his wife. He has left his children. He has left God. And when he was asked about Jesus, he said, yes, he was a good man. And this man has gone into the far country. In fact, unless he repents, he is on his way to hell. That's right. You see, good people don't go to heaven. Believers go to heaven. The rich young ruler said to the Lord, I have obeyed every commandment in the Bible. And the Lord said, there's just one thing you've got to still do. And the Lord was just testing him, you see. He said, give your riches, because he was a very rich man. Give your riches to the poor and come and follow me. And the rich man could not do it. And the Bible says that he turned around and he walked away. A minister told me years ago, he said he believes Jesus was standing there and the tears were running down his face as he saw that young man going to a lost eternity. I hope you are not there. If you are, we're going to pray for you at the end of this message and we're going to give you a wonderful opportunity to come back to the Good Shepherd. You know that in the Middle East, I don't know what they do these days, but I read about this, that if you get a sheep who continually strays, you know a few of them. They come, they say they love Jesus, they give their lives to Christ, and they are sincere. And they raise their hands and they say hallelujah. And then next week they're in the pub and they're cavorting and telling filthy stories because they want to be part of the gang. And then they're back again and they're on their knees, continually coming and going. I want to tell you that God will not tolerate that. He says, not all who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. Now that shepherd, that good shepherd in the Middle East, what he'll do eventually, because he's got a whole flock. He might have a couple of hundred sheep. He's got to look after all of them. Some are old, some are young. There's some rams there. There's some baby lambs. This one sheep continues to leave the flock, and he's got to go and find it, bring it back. Eventually, now this is a hard thing, for you to understand, especially if you're not a shepherd. He takes the front leg and he breaks it. That's right. He breaks the front leg. That sheep now is walking on three legs, never the back leg. If you break the back leg of a sheep, you have to put it down because it can't walk. Breaks the front leg and that sheep walks with three legs. But I want to tell you something now. From that day onwards, that sheep never leaves the side of the good shepherd. Because he understands that he can't do anything by himself. Some of us, okay, now you know the Jesus I, I serve is the Jesus that won't uh, extinguish a smoldering flax. He won't break a bent reed. But he loves you. And in order to preserve you, in order to stop you getting taken out by that, uh, that, that gang of, of wolves, in order to prevent you from going over the cliff, he will break your leg or he will allow it to be broken. I believe that with all my heart because I'm a farmer and I understand discipline. And we need to understand if you will not bow the knee to the Lord and if you keep on playing the fool, you will have to unfortunately understand that there are consequences for your action. I'm talking to young girls. You're sleeping around. You think you're clever. One day you're going to get pregnant, and then what's going to happen? What are you going to tell your mom and dad? Well, I'll have an abortion. An abortion? I want to tell you what abortion is. Abortion is legalized murder. That's all it is. It's killing young children that are unborn. And that is the beginning of the spiral downwards. Now, maybe I'm speaking to a young girl who's had an abortion. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. But I want to tell you something now. God forgives Okay, but unfortunately, and I've got it myself, I've done lots of things in my life, 
I'm not proud of. We've got to put it under the blood of the lamb and say, Lord, please take care of that. I made a terrible mistake. And the Lord said, that's okay. David made a mistake. He was a murderer. Moses made a mistake. He was a murderer. Okay, and we can go right through the book. But you know what they did? They repented. They said, sorry, and they never did it again. And God forgave them. But I want to say to you, young ladies, do not think, and young boys, young men, I want to go and sow my wild oats. I want to go and have a party. I want to have some fun. And then I'll come back and serve the Lord. You won't, you know, because those wild wolves will catch you because you've departed from the good shepherd. You're no longer there. And then don't blame God. You know how many people write to me, why has God done this to me? Why has God done this to me? My husband is beating me up. But your husband was never a Christian. And you were told not to marry an unbeliever. But you did it. You said, I'll get him right. And he, did, he didn't get right, did he? No. So don't blame God. What you have to do is pray. And that God will save him. Angus, I'm battling in business. We're making a lot of money. But I want to tell you, it's a rat race. Because my partner is an unbeliever. And when I want to tithe 10% of our income to the church, he won't allow it because he doesn't believe in Christ. And he's a workaholic and his business is his life. We're making lots of money, but I've never been so unhappy in my life. You are unleavingly yoked. What must I do, Angus? You must leave. But I'll lose a fortune. Still leave. And you'll have peace of mind. All the good things in life, and the good shepherd will tell you, all the good things in life, you cannot buy with money. What are we talking about? I'm talking about love. My wife loves me, not because I've got lots of money. She loves me because she's a Christian. Okay? Health. I've got good health. God has blessed me with good health. God has protected me. I've had the COVID-19. So has my wife. Long time ago. God has seen me through. There are some have gone home. Well, that's okay. That's their time. The things that you cannot pay for are the things that count. Healthy children. That's right. Good relationships. Remember that. It's not about money. So we're talking about the good shepherd. And we like sheep have gone astray. We've got to stop that today. And we've got to get back to Jesus. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. This good shepherd is prepared to die for you. In fact, he did die for you. On Good Friday, he died for you, for your sin, so that you might live. John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, than a man would lay down his life for his friends. The good shepherd is prepared to die for his sheep. Can I tell you something? In the Middle East, they've got a, a sheepfold. It's where you put all your sheep in the evening so that the, the, the wolves won't get them. But that sheepfold's got no door. No door. <laughs> Well, what keeps them in and what keeps the wolves out? The good shepherd. He sleeps across that doorway. Any wolf that wants to come into that fold has got to go across that shepherd and there's no chance of any wolf ever doing that. Any sheep that wants to get out has got to go across that shepherd and he won't allow it. He says, I am the way. And I want to say to you, he's telling you today, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. The Lord's knocking on your door today. He says, and if you open the door, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. The handle of the door is on the inside. There's no handle on the outside. That's why he's knocking. My Jesus, our God, is a gentleman. He will never force himself onto you. He's standing and he's waiting for you. He says, come unto me. All of you that are weary and heavy laden, are you weary today? Well, come to him. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my burden is light. I think you'll find that in Matthew 11, 28 to 30. And he's waiting for you. That broken leg, I know it's bothering some of you. Well, you know, folks, discipline. Discipline is something that we're supposed to not to do anymore, apparently. Well, I always obey the authorities, but never when the authorities supersede the word of God. I'm a follower of the good shepherd. And the Good Shepherd says that He disciplines us because He loves us. In fact, if you look at the book of Proverbs, it says a good beating will not harm your child. In fact, one day it might save his life. 
And I know I've spoken to some born-again spirit Christ, full Christians who will tell me we can't believe with that. I said, if you start, if you start to decide what's true and what's not true in this book, you might as well throw the book away. Jesus says it, I believe it, that settles it. That's what Smith Wigglesworth said, and that's what I believe. We need to discipline our children, and we need to be disciplined so that we can have life abundantly. John 10.10 10. The thief, the wolf, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, the good shepherd said, I came that they might have life abundantly. Folks, I want to close off, but I want to really say to you, when I looked after my sheep, the time the sheep were the happiest, when, when they were in a field with beautiful emerald green grass, okay, just like that song that you just heard, when they were protected, or they were in a protected environment, there were no wild animals trying to take them out, and when they were at peace, that is when they are at their happiest. And you know what also happens? That's when they produce lots of lambs. That's right, twins, triplets. But when a sheep is out of the open and it's on its own, and it's subject to every wild animal, and it's running for its life, it will never conceive and it will never bear any fruit. I want to say to you, get your life back into order. This revival train is taking believers to heaven, not unbelievers. This revival train is taking godly, holy people. What is holiness? I've told you a hundred times. Holiness is the end product of obedience. When you start to live an obedient life, you start to live a holy life. And a holy life is a prosperous and successful life. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about lifestyle. You find you can sleep better at night because the shepherd is the I am in your life. You know that you can trust God to look after your family, your children are overseas studying or wherever. The shepherd, call upon him. He will look after them because you've brought them up in a godly manner and they understand discipline and they understand the principles of this book. So maybe today you are a lost sheep. Maybe you're one of the black sheep. Maybe you've just always been a rebel all your life. I want to tell you, stop doing that because that doesn't make you a hero. And the person that stays on his own, he ends up on his own. I really want to say that to you. The fruit of your labors, remember that. It depends on you. It depends on your attitude. When you start to serve other people, all of a sudden, you'll have lots and lots of other sheep going to the same place on the same train. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just feel burdened to pray for many of your sheep. And I'm talking about Christians, Lord. I'm not even talking about unbelievers. Christians whose love has grown cold, the cares of this world, that's right, Lord, the weeds, the thorns have distracted them. They've gone into the far country, many. They say they love you, but by their actions they deny you. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. But Lord, I pray today that they'll come home. They'll come home to the sheepfold. They'll come back to the good shepherd and they'll start living a constructive and a peaceful life, knowing that their future is secure because the good shepherd is leading them home. And Father, those that have made mistakes, doesn't matter what it is, Lord, that they would confess their sins to you now. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I pray as they pray that prayer, right now where they are, in that room, in that hospital bed, maybe in that prison cell, wherever it is, in that hostel at school, out on the fields, that Lord, you, they will know you have forgiven them. And then they can move on and not look behind them again. I thank you, Lord, for healthy sheep. I thank you for a good flock. And most of all, Father, I want to thank you for your son, the greatest good shepherd that has ever lived. In Jesus' name, amen. And I will see you next week. Remember, the good shepherd loves you. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us on the Revival Train. Download the free Angus Buchan app to stay updated 
watch your favorite programs and enjoy daily devotions.